Alright guys, here's our project for today. We have a Hoshizaki ice machine that apparently was making a beeping noise. It's making ice now. It's just a little just a little nugget machine. So I haven't heard any beeping noise or anything out of the ordinary yet. Sounds like our compressor just kicked on. If you'll see down there we do have our water coil. It is a water cooled unit. Right back here, there's our auger. There's this uh, fill tube, I believe is what that is. Now, I don't work on these every day, so this is definitely something I'm going to have to download the manual on just to make sure I'm understanding the sequence of operation. Because for the last two, three minutes, it's been running water through this tube nonstop. And I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that. Seems out of the ordinary, but I'll have to look at the uh, the manual just to uh, understand the sequence of operation on this. I got the front panel off. There's our control section. There doesn't seem to be any flashing lights of any kind. Now I made sure not to power the machine down yet because I didn't want to erase or reset any codes that might be flashing. Now over here in our ice bin you can tell we are making ice now. Um, it's obviously not full, not anywhere near being full. This right here is our our bin switch. So I'm assuming it was off for quite some time on some sort of code. So once I get the manual out, I'm gonna see if this unit is capable of storing fault codes. If it is, we'll have to go through and see how we can go about uh, retrieving that fault code and seeing what that fault code is and then we will go from there. Alright guys, so I thumbed through the service manual. I didn't see any way to retrieve any stored fault codes. It didn't specifically say that this unit doesn't store fault codes, but it doesn't appear that it does. So, what I can do now is just watch the machine and see if the problem that they were experiencing returns. I'm going to let it run for a little while. See how much of this ice we can get filled up in there and see if our problem comes back. And if it doesn't, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this cover off, just inspect our auger and our bearing for any signs of damage. I've had two or three of these where uh, the, the bearing goes bad on these and the auger just destroys the inside of the evaporator. It's a mess. But these are pretty neat little machines. I'm no expert on them by any means, but um, yeah, essentially all it's doing is there's a, a circular evaporator inside with a screw auger and water is sprayed on that evaporator and it freezes, obviously. And then that screw auger just rotates, pushes the ice up through here, and then there's a little, you probably can't see it from the condensation, but there's a, a what's it called, an impeller sort of device that just sort of chops the ice off when it gets pushed up like that and then pushes it over into our ice bin. Hey, look what we just caught. How many beeps was that? So we got five beeps. All right. So as you heard, we have five beeps coming out of this control. So let's see if we can get to our alarm section real quick. LED lights and audible alarm safeties. So if we look down towards the bottom there, we had five beeps, freeze timer, water valve off, 30 minutes since last water valve activation. So what I believe that means is that it's been 30 minutes since our water valve has last activated but as we can tell here, our water valve is still dumping water into the machine even though it has been powered off or even though it's been de-energized. All right guys, I just powered the unit off and I'm still filling with water. So right here is our water inlet valve. I'm just gonna verify that I don't have any power to it which I don't, because it's off, so that's why. So 
Apparently our water valve is stuck open. Well, we found our water shut off. Got it shut off. Just waiting for the rest of that water to drain out of the machine over here. As you can tell, we are no longer running water through our overflow tube. Which after reading a little bit on this machine, this tube right here uh, appears to be just an overflow tube that comes out of the fill tank. This is our actual fill tube that goes into our evaporator. This right here is our drain tube. And this valve back here, that's our drain valve. So the reason why we had water pouring out of here was just because our water valve never shut off. So let's get up there and take that water valve apart and see what we can figure out. All right, guys, here's our water valve taken all apart. I know it's a bad angle, but uh, we're not working in the best conditions here. So this is our solenoid, of course. This is our little plunger. Now that little plunger sits right on top of this, and there's a little spring right inside here that uh, obviously pushes it back down, I believe. I'm gonna pull that open and just verify that. Because some of these water valves, anyway, the older ones that I'm used to, they had diaphragms inside and they closed based on water pressure, not on a spring. So let's just see. Well, we do have a spring, if you can see right inside there. Yeah, there is a spring in there, see? If maybe our spring is broken. There's our spring. It's just a thin little spring, huh? I'm gonna stretch it out just a little bit. Kind of give it a little bit more pushing force, if you will. And again, guys, I'm not looking for a permanent solution here. This is just, just sort of a, an experiment to see if I can get them up and running for now kind of inspect our little our little diaphragm here, our little gasket. Doesn't look, there's not a whole lot of grub on it. I mean, there's a little bit of crap built up on it. Don't mind my dirty fingernails. All right, there's our little diaphragm. Doesn't look dry rotted or cracked or split anywhere. So really, I mean, it should be closing without issue. There's our, this side that you're seeing through goes down into our fill, uh, the fill, what's it called? The fill, not the fill valve, the fill housing. Our screen is nice and clear. All right, well, let's put it back together and see if that did any good at all. As you can see, we got our water valve back in place. It's hooked up again. So let's go turn the water on over here underneath the sink and see what happens. All right, guys, before I go ahead and turn this unit back on, I just wanted to take a second and familiarize myself with the sequence of operation chart here. Uh, we are starting from the number one position startup. I did just drain all the water out of our our fill assembly, our fill valve and everything, our fill tube, everything's been drained. So once I start up, I will be starting fresh, basically. Just below our control assembly, there are some other controls, our off, drain, or ice positional control, and our dispensing mode. Just a few seconds ago, as I was looking at the service manual, I drained everything just using that drain switch and all that does is open up our drain valve back there it just energizes this drain valve then all the water that we have in our fill assembly that i call it drains out so as soon as i hit the start button we will go through a proper sequence of operation so let's do that
All right, right now our water valve is energized. We are filling up. It says it should take no longer than 90 seconds to fill. And then our gear motor comes on. I don't hear the compressor yet. But I believe there is a uh, sort of a purge. Our gear motor will come on just to clear any ice that's built up around it. And then in a few seconds here it'll start spraying water inside of our evaporator. And we will freeze and actually make ice. Real quick while we're waiting for our compressor to come on, I'm sure some of you guys have noticed that our incoming power is just uh, an extension cord, it looks like. And if it's like most extension cords that I'm used to, it's probably only rated at 15 amps. And if we look over here, our minimum circuit ampacity is 20 amps. Maximum fuse size, 20 amps. So, probably put a quote in or a recommendation at least to upgrade that wiring. Just get some 12 gauge in there. All right guys, our compressor just kicked on. Uh, took a little while, but uh, what I found out is that it's a five minute purge cycle where our gear motor runs for five minutes just trying to get rid of any ice that's built up on top of that auger. And you can bypass it by pushing this little, that little service button right there. You can start to see a little bit of ice forming and getting pushed up through the slots. Let's go over here. Alright guys, we're back to making ice. As you can probably hear, our water valve is no longer going non-stop. I am going to quote to replace that water valve though, because I don't trust it now. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to shut this off, I'm going to drain it, and then I'm going to pull that auger apart and show you a little glimpse of the inside. Alright, here's a quick tour of the place. Now that is kind of dirty, I am also going to quote or recommend that they have this unit PM'd and cleaned, which they will probably deny my quote because they have a, a team of maintenance guys to do it. So anyway, here is the top of our auger. Ice is created, obviously inside the evaporator and it's pushed up through these little, um, I don't know, finger guides maybe. I'm sure there's a better technical term for them. And then as this impeller spins around, it just snaps those off and pushes it straight out to our ice bin. It's a pretty simple concept. Alrighty guys, let me button this up here. We're just about finished up, all right? All right guys, so it's been about uh, two weeks since that last video clip you saw. I am here today to replace that water valve. Apparently it has been holding that temporary fix that I I guess put in place where I just disassembled the valve, kind of cleaned up that diaphragm and then reassembled it. It has been holding, so it is full of ice currently. I got the water shut off. I'm going to shut the power off, move this control panel out of the way, and then we will swap that valve out.
has one of these black clips on there that just holds this, I don't know what you call it actually, funnel device in place. Pops right off. So, real simple. There's your old valve, new valve, pops on. Squeeze that together, put it over top. The water trough. one of the easier water valves to change out on these machines, on these ice machines in general, I suppose. All right, guys, we're just wrapping up here. There's our new shiny water valve, fully installed and leak-free. Real quick, I don't know if it picked it up on the video a little bit ago, but the best way to change that water valve out is just to remove this entire control assembly. Pop that screw out. There's a screw right back there. Pull that screw out. This one right back up there in the corner. Pull that screw out. And this whole control assembly will just slide right down and give you plenty of room to get in there. So let's power it on. As you see, we're full of ice. I moved some of the ice out of the way so our our bin switch wasn't tripped. Go ahead and close this up. It's going through its purge. As you can see, we are producing ice. Our water valve did open up temporarily to fill up that water reservoir tank. And as you can tell, we are good to go. So I'm gonna wrap up and get out of here, all right guys? Hope you enjoy the video. Hit that like button for me, all right? Subscribe while you're at it too, all right? We'll see you on the next one.